Austin and I talked about merging and and I came back and to Dallas and discussed it with our key executives and they said no we don't want to do that we want to be the Gordon company we like being who we are well uh, we went along for about five or six months and Austin called back and said you sure and <laughs> that you that you don't want to do this and I went back to him and said you know this is really something that we need to do we're either going to we're either going to be a leader and acquire and grow uh, both regionally and then nationally or we're going to be acquired by someone and, and I'd, I'd prefer that we be kind of the lead horse in the deal. In each of our companies was growing quite rapidly but we couldn't grow rapidly enough to respond to what the needs were uh, and to compete also with some of those that were a little, a little ahead of us. So we sought out some compatible partners and we found that in, in Gordon and Phillips and over a course of a couple of years of discussions because it's a big step and each of those companies had been um, a separate entity and used to their own way of doing things and so to get agreement and you wanted it from top to bottom uh, it took a couple of years, but you know, ultimately we, we banded together and, and the three of us merged and formed a new company. So we had a pretty good idea of the kinds of businesses that we operated individually, and, and that was a key. Um, we, were, we were all businesses that were successful, um, that uh, were leaders in the marketplace, that uh, were financially sound, uh, had very strong reputations, and probably most importantly, uh, strong leadership of those businesses that, um, and, and we could share a common vision. Uh, we each understood what was taking place and what had to be done in order to achieve the ultimate goal. And although we knew that there would be rough times ahead, that it wouldn't be a smooth integration because we had each developed our own culture, our own way of doing business, and somehow we were going to have to merge all of that into one entity. And we knew it wouldn't be easy, but if we could have the common goal and commit to it and work with one another to make things happen the right way, to benefit the whole as opposed to, to one part of it, that we could succeed. We would have a meeting and discuss some issue, whatever it may be, and somebody would say, that's not the way we do it. And another one of the three originators would say, we don't do that that way. And the third one would say, well, here's how we do that. And we had probably six or eight meetings and one wise person, I wish I could remember so I could identify him and give him credit, said, you know, we all did things successfully and we are all here for that reason. We all have the same philosophy of good people, successful professional people, do the right thing, you know, do it when you say you'll do it. And he said, but how we used to do it doesn't really make any difference. We've got to develop our own culture so that it'll stand for the same things that we stood for individually, but they're all interwoven. And uh, it's worked out real well. In 1996, the merger was completed and Crossmark was born. The four senior leaders who made the merger happen were Fred Arnold, Austin Bell, Bill Phillips, and Peter Powell. These men shared a common vision, a vision to give consistent service to clients regardless of the changes in buying or shipping locations, a vision to leverage capabilities, information, and communication regardless of the class of trade. In 1996, it was a bold stroke. Originally, Crossmark's leaders thought the consolidation window would be open for seven years. Instead, the whole era only lasted three years. By 2000, Crossmark had completed 55 mergers and acquisitions with some of the biggest names in the business, including Feister, Doolin, Bradshaw, Allegiance, J.W. O'Reilly, Cell Group, Tom Fleming, FMS, and Keystone Howley White. Each of these companies had a rich history each played an important role in helping Crossmark become a leader in its industry. In 2002, another company milestone occurred when Crossmark broke ground in Plano, Texas on its own standalone building. Sixteen months later, in August 2003, 
Crossmark's beautiful corporate headquarters was completed, providing a place for corporate associates to work, create, and collaborate with clients. Over the past 100 years, the companies that formed Crossmark shared many of the same qualities, strong leadership, exceptional people, and the ability to identify changes in the marketplace, anticipate opportunities for clients, and take action to capitalize on those opportunities. Today, Crossmark is one of the largest providers of business services to manufacturers and retailers in the consumer packaged goods industry. We are recognized for our excellent customer service, for using technology to benefit our clients, for our customized client solutions, and for our unparalleled execution. Crossmark's clients, both on the manufacturer and retail fronts, have some of the most famous brand names in the world. And those clients are being served by thousands of Crossmark associates in countries around the world, including the US, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. The spirit of Crossmark, it really is our people. It's our people who are constantly looking for solutions and going that extra mile for our clients. That can-do spirit, that is truly what makes Crossmark special. We're proud to look back at our rich history and celebrate the men and women who built this company for the past 100 years. But we also proudly look to the future and to our people who will make us great for the next 100 years. There will always be challenges in the marketplace, but one thing is certain and timeless. Crossmark is committed to being the best business services company within the CPG industry, delivering customized client solutions and unparalleled execution. We believe, for our people and for our clients, the best is yet to come. The Crossmark spirit is about the people. I mean, it's just good people doing things at their very best in, 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 a, in a very dynamic and, and uh, optimistic fashion. Hey, we're capable of accomplishing anything that we set our minds to do. If, if there's an opportunity there, then and, and I think I can take advantage of it and it will benefit the company, then I get that chance to do it. And if it works, it's terrific. Uh, if it doesn't, we learn from it and move to another opportunity. And that to me is, is, is what I see as, as the Crossmark spirit that, that we had a lot of, our three individual companies had, and that we've been able to put that together and continue that culture on. They, they like what they're doing and they like the people with whom they're doing it, and boy, that's gotta be a key to success. You hire good people, you teach them exactly what you want them to do, give them good training, keep them informed, keep them informed, let them know what's going on, keep the surprises to a minimum, and they'll go out and really kill for you. They'll work hard because every human being at the end of every day has to feel that what they did was worthwhile. And gosh, you walk into a supermarket and there's all kinds of worthwhile things you can do. So I just think it's a perfect job. I was born to be a food broker. Thank you.